Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well we've got an effect for you today. We've got an image here. When you hover over it, the button's going to appear. The image is going to blur out, but you can be able to click on the button, pop it out into a light box, or click on the button and take your visitors somewhere else. Really easy to do. We've got to do a bit of coding to achieve this today. But it's really easy and any code I write I'll put below the video for you. So let's get started. I've got this page open in Elementor. I've got a section with three columns. We've just recently done this with the Divi theme and somebody asked if we could do it with Elementor and have a blurred out image there. So first thing I'm going to do is go to the matrix. I'm going to grab me a little image module. Let's pop it in the middle here. Choose an image. Let's grab that one right there. Okay, then choose what you want to do with it. Um, you can add captions if you want to. If you want to pop it out in a light box, just add media file as the link and choose light box. Uh, if you want a custom URL, link it to a website hit the custom URL or any other page on your site. If that's where you want to link to, you can do it that way. I'm going to leave it on Lightbox for that. Great. So we've got an image and we, it's going to pop out into a Lightbox. OK, well, we want to blur it out when we hover over it. So let's go over to our style here. And we'll go down to our CSS filters, which are down here. And up above, you'll see normal and hover. We only want to affect the hover state. So we'll say when we hover over them, click on the CSS filters. I'm going to have it blur out to about five. And just hover over it. And you can see it. That works for me. Obviously, adjust yours how you want. OK, and the time it takes to do that, I want about three quarters ish of a second, 0 0.7, 0 0.75, something like that. 0.7 is good. So it's taking 0 0.7, 0 0.7 of a second to blur out there. That's great. All right. Well, this is where the coding comes in. Now, if you're using the free version of Elementor, you're going to need to go to your dashboard, down to Appearance and Customize. That'll bring you to this page. Right at the bottom, you'll see Additional CSS. And you can simply put your CSS code in here. And it'll do exactly the same thing. I've got the pro version installed today, so I'm going to go over to my advanced tab. I'm going to put my custom CSS in down the bottom here. To make this work today, we've got to give our image a class name. And to do that, advanced tab, where we are at the moment, advanced, hit the little chevron there, and you'll find CSS IDs and classes. I'm going to call mine BTIM for button image. Call yours what you want. It wants to be unique and it wants to mean something to you. So now I've got that class. Let's go back to our custom CSS. All class names need a dot or a period in front. So it's dot and then the class name. Now we're going to use a pseudo element of after to build our little button for this today. So right at the end of our class name, I'm going to put a colon and I'm going to put the word after. Then a gap. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. Inside those curly brackets, we can put the code that we want to use. So the first thing I need to do is tell it what I actually want in there. So that's content, colon, and open some single inverted commas here. Inside, put what you want your button to say. And as you can see, it's added it after our image here. Now we want it up in the middle here. Well, I want mine up in the middle here. You can have yours wherever you want, but I'm going to put mine in the middle here. So to do that, we need to use a bit of absolute positioning. So we're going to say position, colon, absolute. Now we need to tell it where we want it to be. I want mine right in the middle, like I said. So I'm going to say top, 50%. Obviously, if you want further down, put a higher value in. And I don't know if you can see that because it's kind of dark on dark. We'll, we'll fix that in a minute. It's popped it down there for us. And I want it halfway across. So I'm going to say left. 50% also. 
Okay, and actually the left corner of that is now actually right in the middle, but we want the whole thing in the middle, so we've got to translate it of half its width and height to get it bang in the middle, so we'll add another line. And don't forget, I'm putting this code for you down below if anybody just needs to copy and paste it, but if you want to learn how to do it, follow along. So I'm going to say transform, go on translate, and we're going to open some round brackets now and put in the amount that we want to actually translate by, which will in this case is negative 50% comma by negative 50%. So that should be bang in the middle now. It looks pretty, pretty good to me. When we blur out, it looks quite good there. Let's make it a little easier to read. Let's give it a color. So I'm going to say color white, which is FFF in hexadecimal. As you can see, that's made that white. Obviously, you can give it a font size if you want to, but I'm simply going to give mine a background color. So that's background, colon. And I've got a little free chrome color picker up here. Let's give it that sort of light blue color of my logo up there. Now I'll copy that. Hex color, so it has a hashtag and the number. There we go, and it's that color right there. If you wanted to make that opaque or see-through, you could put two numbers at the end from 00, 0 to 99 and have it sort of 50% opaque like that, or 90% opaque, we'll make it a little more full. But I'm gonna have mine full, so I'll take that back off. That's just an option for you. Okay, and I wanna put a bit of padding there so it looks a bit more like a button. So I'm gonna say padding. Top and bottom, I'm just going to have five pixels. Left and right, I'm going to have 20 pixels. There we go, that looks like a button to me. And I can give it a little border radius to round off those corners if you want to make it even look more like current buttons do. They usually have a border radius of about four or five, so let's do that. Let's give it four pixels. There we go, that's giving it those slightly rounded corners. Great, so we've got our button. But we notice the background's blurring out, which is great. The button's nice and in your face because the background's blurring out. But we've got our hover icon on the cursor when we hover over the image. When we hover over the button, it changes back to an arrow, which means it's not going to be clickable. And we want it to be clickable. So to make sure it's clickable, I'm going to say pointer events colon none. Now when I try and do it, we can click on it. So it'll open in that light box or go to the link if you put a link in there, which is just what we need. Great. And the last thing that we need to do to this to make it work is we don't want to see this button at all until we're actually hovering over. So what I'm going to do is just after our pointer events, I'm going to say opacity or transparency or see-throughness if you want. Zero, which is totally transparent. And as you can see, it's disappeared. Now we need to bring it back when they hover on it. And so let's take that class name. Just the dot and the class name, not the colon and the after after it. Control C to copy that. I'm going to drop down a couple. Let's make this a bit bigger so you can see. I'm going to paste that class name in there. Just after the M, I'm going to put a colon and the word hover. Then I'm going to put another colon and the word after. So we're actually affecting this above bit. So when it hovers on it, let's open and close some curly brackets. A bit of space in between. We want the opacity to be 1, which is fully visible. And you can increment up in decibels, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. for different transparency levels. Let's make sure this is going to work. There we go. Now, the blur is taking 0.7 of a second to roll in, if I remember. That's how we said it in the beginning. The button's popping in there instantly. So let's match it so the button fades in at about the same time as the blur actually happens. So to do that, we can use a bit of transition duration. This goes in the regular state, not the hover state. So after the opacity there, I'm going to say transition. 
and it's prompted us down there you can use that if you like and let's match it 0.7 seconds we used before 0.7 s semicolon and then they both should happen around about the same time now and you can slow it down or speed it up if you want so let's save this and we'll have a look at what we've got on the front end there's our image when we hover over it blows out and our button takes 0.7 of a second to fade in and because the background's blowing up it focuses you on that button which is great when we hover on the button we can click on it and open it in a light box or take our visitors to any URL you want so I hope that answered that question there's how to blur out an image add a button with a light box or a link I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful if you have please give it a thumbs up ring the bell comment share and subscribe to our YouTube channel once again this has been Jamie from system 22 and webdesigntechtips.com thanks for watching have a great day